Some new cars are just a bit meh, you know, a bit beige, lacking in joy, too clinical. The Suzuki Swift is not one of those cars. No, the Suzuki Swift is a little bubble of joy. Is it the best small car you can buy? No, it's not the best small car you can buy, but it does show the virtues of low weight, simplicity, and it's just good fun. It's a small car that reminds you of what small cars used to be like. Now you might be watching this and thinking, why is Cargo's UK reviewing the Swift in 2023 when in fact it hasn't been updated since 2021? And more importantly, why is Chris's hood stuck halfway around his head? The answers to that are twofold. One, it's very windy. Uh, and two, um, we never actually reviewed the Swift first time round. We reviewed the Sport, but not the standard Swift. So we wanted to revisit it and we chose now because it coincides with when Suzuki has updated its warranty, which is really important because it means that Suzuki's warranty used to be three years, 60,000 miles, which was a bit lacklustre. It now, as long as you keep getting your car serviced at Suzuki afterwards, it will keep topping up the warranty up to seven years and 100,000 miles. And that means that the Swift, and indeed all Suzuki's, now have a warranty that effectively rivals Kia's. So, Let's have a think about the Swift in those terms because it is a really compelling aspect to the ownership. Um, it still has one of the smaller boots in the class. It's bigger than the Mark II Swift, but this Mark III model, it's still one of the smaller boots for a Super Mini, way smaller than something like a Fabia. But as we'll come to in a bit, it's also much cheaper than a Fabia. Um, let's have a look at the back seats as well. Okay, rear seats. Um, the headroom's okay, these curve around quite tightly here, so it's possible to bang your head on the side. But actually, legroom and headroom in general are okay, and there are three seats back here. Again, um, not as big as the roomiest cars in the class, um, but the Swift is one of the cheaper models you can go for, but also a lot bigger than the Swift's predecessors, so um, yeah, not bad. On the uh, subject of the warranty, I forgot to mention earlier, um, Suzuki's have a really good reputation for being reliable cars um, and customer service. They always do very well in customer service uh, surveys as well. All of which, of course, is one of the reasons why they can offer a long warranty because if your cars don't break down, then customers don't need to claim, but it's just worth flagging. Which is not to say that Suzuki's or the Swift are perfect. And one of the common complaints that people have about the brand's cars, in particular, about the Swift cheap interior. I mean, this really is very hard and plasticky. Even my kids got in this car and said, why is it so plasticky? Um, I told them it's because it's quite cheap, but um, yeah, it really does feel a bit cheap in here. The design, however, is all right. There's lots of sort of uh, pods and circular, um, vents and everything else that all ties together okay but yeah not high quality also a cost cutting measure you'll see this has a five speed gearbox not a six speed gearbox this is actually the top spec sz5 and it's still a five speed gearbox alternatively you can have a cvt and you can even have a swift with all grip four wheel drive this is the front wheel drive model equipment levels in general are fairly good actually on the swift so all models for example come with Aircon, six airbags, autonomous emergency braking, they all get a touchscreen with DAB radio, CarPlay, Android Auto. Um, the screen itself is pretty basic. Uh, the graphics aren't brilliant. The menus aren't particularly logical. It's a bit slow to load. But once you're into CarPlay, a lot of that disappears because the interface is very intuitive to use. Oh, sorry. The, um, the dials, uh, look quite smart I have to say and the driving position is good as well so one of the changes Suzuki made for the Mark III was to lower the seating position and uh, it, it really benefits from that. So the first thing to know about the Swift, the main thing to know really when it comes to driving is that it really doesn't weigh very much, it weighs 911 kilograms. That's nothing in 2023, particularly when you bear in mind that 
some small cars now are electric and something like a Renault Zoe for example that's 1500 kilograms so 911 is really nothing and it it defines everything that this car does um, including avoiding some of the massive potholes that appear to be around at the moment um, so if we think about the engine uh, it's a 1.2 four cylinder naturally aspirated so no turbocharger and it has 82 brake horsepower which is well it's nothing is it these days I, I borrowed my dad's electric mountain bike the other day and I'm pretty sure that has more than 82 horsepower it also only has 79 pound foot of torque this Swift um, so you would think it would be dreadful but actually because the car is so light it's not too bad it's not as bad as you'd think certainly uh, 0 to 62 takes 13.1 seconds but it doesn't feel that slow um, and it's just the lightness playing in your favour. The other thing that helps is it's a mild hybrid. So there's a small battery, uh, it's about six kilograms, it sits underneath the driver's seat, and it will take a bit of regenerative braking to top it up. You can't really feel the brake regen in the Swift, but you can feel when you then get a little boost of power, particularly at low revs when accelerating hard, um, it just stops the car feeling quite as slow as it perhaps could let's say. It doesn't make you feel fast, it stops it from feeling quite as slow as, uh, as it could do. So a couple of other things to note about the Swift and all of the stuff when I'm talking about this car and I'm thinking about this car it really relates back to that point I made right at the start of the video is it reminds me of how small cars used to feel. Admittedly it's you know it's more grown up and it's more refined but generally speaking um, it's a little bit of a throwback. So on the motorway it's a bit noisy you get a bit of wind noise and stuff but it's fine because you only get five gears 70 miles an hour is about 3000 rpm um, so it does rev away a bit but it turns in nicely the steering is quick and well weighted um, on a country road it's a really fun kind of scrappy little car and what makes the swift so much fun like we say the steering is is nice and quick um, but it's the way the car will dive into corners and then it just hangs on and it hangs on and it hangs on it really doesn't understeer very much not like you'd expect in a sort of a normal hatchback it hangs on really gamely and that combined with the fact that you have to work the engine so hard in order to make any kind of decent progress is what makes it feel quite scrappy and fun that's where the joy from this car comes you can certainly see why this is a good platform for a bit more power in the Swift Sport and why that car is, uh, you know, is pretty well regarded as a, as a performance car. But look, you can chuck it into a bend and yeah, it's just, it's a bit of harmless fun. And look, I'm almost at the top of second gear now. There's the rev limiter, 57 miles an hour, 57, <laughs> amazing. You could drive this car on its door handles you'd still not be at the speed limit. Love it. Another thing that really helps the Swift be enjoyable to drive is that's quite a good little gear shift. So yes, you've only got five gears. Oh dear, look, there's the low rev. Come on, come on, mild hybrid. There we go. Yeah, it's only got five gears to flick through, but the shift itself is reasonably satisfying and it's quick. You can really snap between the gears. So that helps you make the most of the the modest performance and of course it's a small car and that means you can really use a bit more of the lane on the subject of the weight of the car and the power of this car um, make me think about power to weight and actually if you had a 1200 kilogram car which is more typical of a small car you would need another 20 or so horsepower to get to a similar power to weight ratio as this Swift and with that, you're also going to have worse fuel economy. So that's another good thing about having a light car. So this Swift does about 58 miles per gallon on the WLTP cycle. And we've seen 55 to 60 miles per gallon. It really will genuinely do that. Despite only having five gears on the motorway, it's still a very economical little car. In terms of downsides of the Swift, obviously we've said it does feel a bit cheap in here. Um, also the Euro NCAP score, it gets four stars, which is not as high as many of its rivals, quite frankly. 
Um, and also, you know, pricing wise, it's competitively priced, but it's not cheap, cheap. I mean, nothing is cheap these days, is there? But for context, the Dacia Sandero is £13,000, an entry level Swift is about £16,000. That gets you the SZT. As I said, we're in the SZ5, which has a few more bits of equipment, but really the SZT is not badly equipped at all. Um, and it's the best selling model. Um, it's priced at the same level as the entry level Kia Rio, but you know, I think it's a lot more fun to drive. And it's cheaper than things like a Skoda Fabia, uh, say Ibiza, Vauxhall Corsa, all of those are about 18 and a half grand. And a Ford Fiesta now is about 19 grand. So actually you start to think 16 for a Swift, it doesn't sound so bad, does it? So there you have it, our slightly overdue review of the Suzuki Swift. And an explanation of that while it might not be the best small car on the market, it's still really worthy of your attention, particularly with that warranty as well. It's just, just a little ball of fun. I'm gonna have to pull over in a minute because my cameraman looks like he's about to be sick. But uh, do tune in for the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. And thank you for watching this slightly overdue video of the Suzuki Swift. Can we stop now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah.